as a friendly reminder. Hey, it's Jo. Welcome back to this channel or welcome to this channel if you are new. Thank you so much for watching this video or for listening to this podcast if you're listening on Spotify. I have a podcast named What Happened by Hey It's Jo. I will link it below. Please check the description box. For today's video, we are going to talk about the heartbreaking case of Zara Claire Baker. On November 16, 1999, Zara Claire Baker was born in the regional city of Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, Australia, to parents Emily and Adam Baker. Emily and Adam had been engaged briefly, pero it wasn't a planned pregnancy, and the couple eventually separated. When Emily gave birth, she was only 19 years old. And weeks after yung pinanganak si Sarah, binigay niya yung full custody ni Sarah kay Adam. Because Emily had been suffering from postpartum depression. During that time, Adam was in his early 20s. After makuha ni Adam yung full custody, nag-move sila sa Newcastle, but still sa New South Wales pa din. And... Adam and Zara lived with Adam's parents, so yung grandparents ni Zara. Occasionally, nakikita ni Emily si Zara, pero yung last na nakita niya si Zara was when Zara was only 8 months old. And actually, this was the last time that Emily ever got to see her daughter before Adam decided to cut her out of their lives. Totally, pinutol ni Adam yung ugnayan niya kay Emily. So, hindi na nakita ni Emily si Sarah. And walang dahilan na binigay si Adam kung bakit niya ginawa yun, kung bakit totally inalis na lang niya si Emily sa buhay nilang mag-ama. In 2004, Adam and the rest of his family moved to a small town named Gairu. I'm not really sure if it's pronounced as Gairu, pero sabihin na lang natin na Gairu, yung name ng town na to, in Queensland. So, nung nag-move si Adam at yung pamilya niya, Sa Gairo, Queensland, nagtrabaho sila sa isang sugarcane farms, si Adam at yung iba sa mga kapamilya niya. So dahil nagtatrabaho si Adam, tinutulungan siya ng kanyang mother na si Karen Baker para alagaan si Zara kapag nasa trabaho si Adam. Zara grown up to be an adorable, brown-haired, blue-eyed little girl and she was absolutely adored by her grandmother. The following year, 2005, when Zara was just 5 years old, the bakers received a tragic news. Zara had been diagnosed with bone cancer. Imagine, she was only 5 years old. And as a result of this bone cancer, Yung lower part of Zara's leg had to be amputated. Kailangang alisin, kailangang putulin. And Zara was fitted with a prosthetic leg. But still, Zara was so bright and optimistic. And hindi hinayaan ni Zara na tong pangyayara na to will let her down. Actually, yung kanyang prosthetic leg ay tinawag pa niyang Barbie leg, which is a great story and a testament to just how resilient and positive young children can be. So after the diagnosis kay Zara, she eventually 
was cured, I believe. And she recovered from her illness. So after makarecover ni Zara, her family and Zara soon received another blow. The cancer had returned. As a result of the second round of cancer treatments, Zara lost most of her hearing permanently. So, nawalan siya ng pandinig. So, she was fitted for hearing aids. So, sa murang edad ni Zara, she already faced so many battles. Siguro mas marami pa sa mga battles na pwedeng kaharapin ng isang adult. And she overcame each and every one of these battles. And she remained bubbly and positive throughout. And by 2008, Zara was in remission. At this point, I want to warn you that this video or this case involves a crime against a child but definitely i won't be describing graphic scenes or basta anything graphic pero i just want to warn you so kung sensitive kayo sa topic na to you can click out and watch other videos not specifically my videos pero kung gusto nyo you know manood ng ibang videos buko dito then you can click out i'll just tell you enough for you to understand this case. So, from 2006 hanggang 2008-ish, parang ganun, Zara had a lot of health battles. And during those times, siguro gusto lang ni Adam na makapaglibang, he used a website. It's like an instant messaging, parang Tinder, parang ganun. Um, basically, para siyang dating site. Kumbaga. So, dito sa website na to, Adam was meeting women. Nakikipag-usap siya sa iba't ibang tao, sa iba't ibang um, girls. Kumbaga. And particularly, meron siyang isang kausap na ang username ay Gothic Fairy. A.K.A. Elisa. And Elisa was from North Carolina in the U.S. So, nasa magkaibang bansa sila. Nasa Australia, si Adam. And nasa U.S., si Elisa. And as I've said earlier, siguro kaya gumawa ng account si Adam dito sa website na to is para malibang siya. Para lang ba? Parang escape niya dun sa mga kinakaharap nila na amini naman natin, napakabigat magkaroon ng ganitong problema, lalo na sa isang magulang na magkasakit yung mga anak nila. Diba, lagi nga natin naririnig na sa mga magulang, especially na, di bali nang sila yung magkasakit, wag lang yung mga anak nila. So, siguro this is like an escape for Adam. And he was a single dad. His only child was very, very sick. So, nagigets ko kung bakit gumawa siya ng account sa site na ganito para lang siguro malibang din siya paulit-ulit okay so nung namit ni Adam si Gothic Fairy doon sa website na yon immediately they hit it off straight away they entered into a relationship this relationship pretty much got serious quote unquote kahit nasa magkaibang bansa sila. So, Elisa Fairchild is her full name. She was 40 years old during that time. And Elisa decided to visit Adam and his family in Gairo, Australia. And at this time, Adam was already 31 years old. So, nine years yung tanda ni Elisa kay Adam. And nung 2008 nga, nagmeet sila face to face. Dahil pumunta si Elisa sa Australia. 
and after nilang mag-meet, parang mas nagustuhan pa nila yung isa't isa, they fell in love with each other and they decided to get married as soon as possible. And they moved to the U.S. together. Siyempre, kasama ni Adam, si Zara. Kumbaga, tinanggap ni Elisa na may anak na si Adam. So, nag-move sila sa U.S. kasama ni Adam, si Zara. But if you think na it's a happily ever after, it's not. Because... Elisa is already married. Of course, nung time na nagpakasal si Adam at si Elisa, hindi alam ni Adam na kasal na pala si Elisa sa iba back in the US. July 2008, nung nagpakasal si Elisa kay Adam doon sa bahay ng parents ni Adam. And halos lahat ng family and friends ni Adam hindi nila masyadong bet si Elisa para kay Adam. And nung time na yon hindi pa alam ng kapamilya at mga kaibigan ni Adam na Elisa was already married to another man in the US. And isa pa sa inaayawan ng pamilya at ng kaibigan ni Adam kay Elisa is because she was a compulsive liar. Because may ugali si Elisa na nagkukwento siya na mga bagay-bagay tungkol sa sarili niya. Because Elisa will tell stories about herself, extravagant stories, like she was a cancer survivor or she was an ex-police officer that had been shot in line of duty. And sinabi ni Elisa na naging bounty hunter din siya. I'm not sure kung ano yung ibig sabihin niya sa pagiging bounty hunter but yeah, yun ang kwento niya tungkol sa sarili niya. Sinasabi ng mga kapamilya at mga kaibigan ni Adam na parang lahat yun nangyari na agad kay Elisa. I mean, lahat yun nagawa ni Elisa talaga ba? Naging cancer survivor, nagpulis, naging bounty hunter. Parang naisip ng mga kapamilya ni Adam na she was lying. So madaming reservations yung family and friends ni Adam about kay Elisa and doon sa kanilang relationship or sa marriage ng mag-asawa. Pero yung number one concern ng family ni Adam was Zara. Kung isasama ni Adam si Zara sa US, paano yung medical bills niya? Dahil nga may sakit si Zara, may cancer pa rin siya. Of course, mahaba-habang gamutan yun, kumbaga. E sa Australia, free yung healthcare. So, walang problema sa pagpapagamot si Zara kung nasa Australia siya. Pero kung magmove siya sa US, ibang usapan na yun. So, ang inaalala ng pamilya ni Adam, kapag nasa US si Zara, paano kung magkasakit ulit siya dun? And, alam naman natin na napakamahal ng pagpapagamot, lalo na kung cancer, yung sakit ng tao, bata man yan, or kahit na anong edad. So, it would cost a lot. I mean, a fortune siguro. Dahil napakamahal nga ng pagpapagamot. And dahil nga doon, kinausap ng pamilya ni Adam, yung mag-asawa, si Elisa at si Adam, kung anong plano nila, anong gagawin nila kung sakali mang mangyari yun. Siyempre, ang number one concern ng family ay si Zara. Pero, in naman ni Zara at ni Adam na they had plenty, quote-unquote, of money na if anything daw, kung may mangyari man kay Zara health-wise, na ang sabi ni Elisa, quote-unquote, she had more than enough money to take care of Zara. However, dahil nga compulsive liar itong si Elisa, it's another lie. So kahit na tumututol yung pamilya ni Adam, nadalhin ni Adam at ni Elisa si Zara sa US, wala silang nagawa. Because sa batas, si Adam pa din yung tatay ni Zara. So 
siya pa din yung nasunod. And nag-move nga si Elisa, si Adam, at si Zara sa US towards the end of 2008 to start a new life. Ang sabi ko nga kanina, Elisa Fairchild was already married, legally married to another man when she married Adam. Although, si Elisa at yung una niyang asawa ay hiwalay na. Hiwalay, I mean, magkahiwalay ng bahay, pero hindi pa rin legally separated or divorced. So, sa pagkakaalam ko, null at void dapat ang kasal ni Adam at ni Elisa. However, hindi pa rin sinasabi ni Elisa kay Adam na kasal pa rin siya dito sa lalaki na to. Pero, meron pang isang nakalimutang sabihin or aminin or ayaw sabihin at aminin ni Elisa kay Adam na Elisa had already been married six times. So, si Adam ay pang pitong asawa na ni Elisa. I'm not judging her or anything. I mean, wala ako sa posisyon para man-judge ng tao pero pang pito beshi talaga ba? So, itong si Elisa, meron siyang medyo hindi magandang track record when it comes to her previous husbands. Itong mga naging asawa ni Elisa, pinakasalan niya itong mga lalaking to, yung anim na nauna kay Adam, within a three-year period. Kayo na lang ang bahalang mag-compute kung paano nangyaring nakaanim siya within doon sa tatlong taon. So, ibig sabihin, kada taon nagpapakasal siya ng dalawang beses. Pwera pa kay Adam. Parang ang ginagawa ni Elisa was, before niya i-divorce yung kanyang previous husband, nagpapakasal na siya doon sa kasunod. Meron pa akong nabasa na article na at one point, Elisa was married to three men all at the same time. And according dun sa article, yung mga lalaki ang umaalis doon sa relationship pag nalalaman nila of course na nagsisnungaling si Elisa sa kanila. Parang kumbaga huli na nung malaman nung mga naging previous husbands na Elisa na nung nagpakasal pala sila ay kasal pa itong si Elisa sa ibang lalaki. By the time na Elisa turned 25 years old, she already had three children, two girls and a boy, all from three fathers and two marriages. I'm not being judgmental or anything, pero sinasabi ko lang yung facts. Ito lang yung nabasa ko sa article. And apparently, yung relationship ni Elisa sa mga anak niya, doon sa tatlo niyang anak, ay hindi rin masyadong maganda. Because allegedly, Elisa was treating her children Badly, she was allegedly abusive and neglectful. And in turn, yung mga anak ni Elisa, hindi siya masyadong gusto. Okay, so itong lalaki na pinakasalan ni Elisa before Adam, his name was Aaron. And ang weird pa dito sa sitwasyon na to, not only na si Aaron at si Elisa is still keeping in touch, inintroduce ni Elisa si Adam kay Aaron. Pero ang sabi ni Elisa, Aaron is her brother. Hindi niya sinabi kay Adam na si Aaron ay previous husband niya, pero pinakilala niya bilang kapatid. So in general, yung buhay ni Elisa was very unpredictable. And ang sabi pa sa article, Elisa lived at about 40 plus addresses in 7 years dahil lagi siyang nakikick out doon sa mga inuupahan niyang bahay. And yung mga rason, iba-iba. Elisa also had a criminal record. Meron siyang 7 convictions for passing fake checks, mga peking check eh, plus baon din siya sa utang. So, yung sinasabi niya na marami siyang pera at kaya niyang ipagamot si Zara if ever 
na kailanganin ni Zara ng treatment sa US, hindi siya totoo. Compulsive liar talaga si ate mo girl. So, nung nag-move si Adam at si Zara sa US, tumira sila sa tatay ni Elisa in a small city called Hickory in North Carolina in Catoba? Catoba? I don't know. Basta yon Sa Hickory, North Carolina. Of course, Adam and Zara were not legal residents of the U.S. at this time. Pero ang alam ko, pwede namang mag-apply ng visa itong si Adam and mag-apply siya ng residency sa U.S. Pero Adam never did. Hindi siya nag-apply for residency. And after about six months of living in Hickory, Elisa's father kicked them out because of Elisa's abuse of illegal substances. Alam nyo na kung ano yun. Hindi ko nababanggitin. So, dahil doon, nag-moved ulit si Zara, si Elisa, at si Adam. Nag-move sila sa isang flat or apartment in Granite Falls. And sabi ng mga kapitbahay ng mga bakers, doon kung saan sila nag-move, lagi nilang naririnig na nag-aaway itong si Adam at si Elisa. Lagi daw mayroong explosive arguments yung mag-asawa, both verbal and physical. And si Adam daw at si Elisa, lagi silang late magbayad ng upa nila dun sa kanilang apartment or dun sa kanilang flat. So, after nilang hindi makapagbayad for six months, yung landlady nila ask them to leave, of course, bilang negosyo, ang paupahan, gusto mo rin kumita, and binigyan naman sila ng anim na buwan na palugit, pero hindi pa rin nakabayad si Elisa at si Adam. And itong landlady nila ay nakatira katabi lang nung kanilang apartment or nung kanilang flat. And this landlady was shocked to learn na meron palang young daughter itong si Elisa at si Adam dahil in six months na nakatira si Elisa at si Adam doon sa paupahan niya, never nilang nakita si Zara kahit isang beses. Hindi siya lumabas ng kanilang flat para maglaro doon sa neighborhood and walang nakakita kay Zara na mga kapitbahay. Imagine six months na nakatira si Elisa at si Adam doon sa flat na yon pero never na nakita ng kapitbahay si Zara. Which is weird. Kahit pa may sakit si Zara, I believe gumaling siya ulit nung bumalik ulit yung kanyang Um, cancer. So, dapat kahit pa paano, nakakalabas siya, nakakapaglaro siya, nakakalangap siya ng sariwang hangin bilang bata, ba? Diba? Actually, nakita naman nung landlady si Zara nung nag-move in yung family doon sa flat. Pero after yung makita si Zara one time, nung lumipat nga doon yung pamilya, hindi niya na nakita ulit yung bata. So, in room, nung landlady na baka hindi talaga anak, Nung mag-asawa si Zara, baka relative lang and nagstay lang sa kanila for a while and nag-move out din or kinuha din ng nanay or ng tatay. Isa pang napansin nung landlady, nung nag-moved out daw yung mga bakers doon sa kanyang flat, nakarinig siya ng strange noises sa attic. And bago lumipat yung mga bakers doon sa flat na pinapaupahan niya, wala daw siya naririnig na kahit na anong noise sa attic niya. So, nung nakalipat na yung mga bakers, nung umalis na dun sa kanyang flat, inutusan nitong landlady yung asawa niyang lalaki na i-check yung attic. So, sabi ng husband niya, nung nag-investigate doon sa attic, nakakita daw ng mga boards, ng bedsheet doon sa attic. And naisip nitong landlady na baka doon nagstay si Zara sa attic or at least baka doon pinatulog nung mag-asawa for six months na lumipat or tumira sila doon sa flat kasi nga wala nakakita kay Zara. Pero it was never proven 
na doon nga pinagstay ng mag-asawa si Zara. So now let's talk about Zara's schooling. So para magkaroon ng sense kung ano ba yung nangyari kay Zara. Nung nag-moved yung bakers sa US, Zara was enrolled in Hudson Elementary before transferring to Granite Falls Elementary. But it wasn't too long before Zara was pulled out of school. So before lumipat ng Granite Falls, yung Baker's family, nag-aaral si Zara sa Hudson Elementary School. So yung attendance record ni Zara had been good. Kahit may sakit siya, yung attendance niya was almost perfect. And yung reason kung bakit pinull out si Zara sa school ni Elisa at ni Adam was because of the amount of complaints and concern for Zara's welfare from her teachers. Kasi itong mga teachers ni Zara sa Hudson actually kept a record detailing abuse that they thought na nangyayari or ini-endure ni Zara at home. Kasi minsan, pumapasok si Zara na meron siyang mga bruises and one time, pumasok siya ng may black eye. Of course, manonotice yun ng teachers ni Zara. So, nire-record nila yung mga details ng nakikita nilang possible na abuse kay Zara. During that time, Zara was 9 years old. 9 years old lang siya. Of course, dahil nga dun sa mga napapansin ng teachers na parang si Zara nga ay inaabuso, ang sabi ni Elisa at ni Adam, kiniklaim nila na kaya nila pinull out itong si Zara sa elementary school is because gusto nila na i-homeschool na lang si Zara. Because, sabi ni Adam at ni Elisa, the teachers was overstepping the line. So, sinabi nila ni Elisa at ni Adam na i-homeschool na lang nila si Zara. And from my understanding, sa pagkakaalam ko, hindi lang basta-bastang sasabihin mong i-homeschool mo ang anak mo. And mag-decide ka na gusto mong ikaw na lang yung magturo sa kanila. Kasi ang alam ko, kailangan mong uh, mag-register, something like that. Kailangan mong mag-register for your intent na i-homeschool ang anak mo sa sort of sa Department of Education para ma-monitor din nila yung progress ng anak mo and to help you na ma-make sure na you're doing the right thing na natuturuan mo ng tama yung anak mo. But because nagmo-move around nga itong pamilya ng Bakers, so it seemed like Zara fell through the cracks of the system. And walang nakanotice na she was not enrolled in school and she was not being properly homeschooled. So now, let's jump to when the bakers moved to Granite Falls. Doon sa flat nila sa Granite Falls from Hickory nung na-evict sila. Doon sa Hickory na, na flat nila dahil hindi sila nakabayad for 6 months. So, nag-move sila sa Granite Falls. And after noon, nag-moved ulit sila to a trailer park in the town of Hudson. So, doon sa trailer park, the fighting not only continued between Elisa and Adam, but doon sa other residents din ng trailer park. And na-witness ng mga residente doon yung horrific way kung paano itrato ni Elisa yung kanyang stepdaughter na si Zara. Ang sabi ng mga residente ng trailer park, allegedly, Elisa was often seen yelling abuse at Zara. Elisa made Zara walk up and down a hill in the trailer. Kumbaga, verbal abuse yung natatanggap ni Zara na nakikita ng mga residents doon. As I've said earlier, naka-prosthetic si Zara because nga na-amputate yung isang paa niya. 
na-witness yon ng mga kapitbahay nila doon sa trailer park. Ano pa kaya yung ginagawang pang-aabuso na Elisa kay Zara inside their home? So after ng mga pangyayaring yon, isang residente ng trailer park named Tanya decided that she had enough of witnessing Elisa abusing Zara. So, one time, kinonfront ni Tanya si Elisa. Kumbaga, siguro, sinabi ni Tanya na stop it. Parang, she's just a child, kumbaga. Pero, ang ginawa ni Elisa, pero, Elisa responded by threatening Tanya. So, nag-report si Tanya sa mga police na tinreffen siya ni Elisa and she had been witnessing frequent abuse of Zara na inaabuso si Zara ng kanyang stepmom and yung Department of Social Services did end up paying a visit doon sa bahay ng mga bakers and in interview nila yung pamilya separately but unfortunately maybe at this point Sobrang takot si Zara sa kanyang stepmom. I don't know kung, I'm not sure kung bakit hinahayaan ni Adam na abusuhin ni Elisa yung anak niya. I'm not sure kung paano yung family dynamics nila. But, hindi dapat nangyari yung mga nangyari. If only Adam did something or said something. And allegedly, at this point, Zara nga was too scared and... Adam was just too ignorant and Elisa was a master manipulator. Apat na beses, binisita ng social services yung bahay ng mga bakers and nag-follow up sila ng mga reports from a number of people na nakawitness nga kay Zara being abused by her stepmom, including her teachers and yung kanya mga former neighbors. And may isa pang incident na pinapalo ni Elisa si Zara and Elisa broke her hand on Zara's prosthetic leg. So kahit na nag-imbestiga yung social services and they visited the family several times but nothing was done. So nung August 6, 2010, the Department of Social Services closed Zara's case. And sabi nila, hindi daw sila nakakita ng evidence of child abuse. And this would later prove to be a tragic mistake. So yung last place kung saan tumira yung mga bakers ay sa isang bahay sa Northwest sa Hickory pa din. And dito sa bahay na to, yung mga kapitbahay nila were not aware that Elisa and Adam had a 10-year-old daughter. At this point, Zara was allegedly being homeschooled. So, hindi siya umaalis ng bahay dahil wala siyang reason to leave the house. But, it appeared that her parents, Elisa and Adam, never took her out of the house or even let her play in the neighborhood. And at this time, Adam was working for a small tree maintenance business, which was owned by a man named Mark, who happened to be the landlord of Adam and Elisa. And because Adam was illegally working in the U.S. dahil hindi pa nga siya nakakakuha ng residency, he acquired a job that paid cash. And binabawas na lang ni Mark yung renta doon sa sweldo ni Adam. And for once, nakakabayad ng upa yung mag-asawa. Because if you remember, napapaalis sila sa kanilang mga inuupahan previously dahil hindi sila nakakabayad ng renta. So dito, dahil yung landlord ni Adam, 
ay doon din siya nagtatrabaho so automatic na binabawas na lang yung upa sa sweldo niya. Allegedly, Elisa was drug dealing and ang sabi pa, hindi daw alam ni Adam na yun ang ginagawa ni Elisa. I'm not sure kung gaano ka ka-ignorant si Adam na hindi niya alam kung ano yung ginagawa ng asawa niya. Noong October 9, 2010 at around 5 a.m. or 5.20-ish ng umaga, Elisa called 911 and sinabi niya sa operator na nagising siya and nakita niya na yung mga piles ng kahoy sa kanyang backyard were on fire. So yung fire department, of course pumunta sila doon, pinot out nila yung fire and the fire was relatively small and it was determined to be an act of arson. Sinadya yung sunog. Of course dahil may sunog, may pumunta din na police officer doon sa scene and habang nag-iikot yung police officer to see if there was anything suspicious, he found something unusual and disturbing. Yung passenger side door of Adam's work vehicle, which was a 1996 Chevy SUV, was open with the smell of gasoline coming from the inside and possibly indicating na someone planned to set the vehicle on fire as well. However, hindi lang yun yung strange dito sa pangyayari na to. A handwritten ransom note was found doon sa windscreen nung vehicle ni Adam and naka-address siya sa boss ni Adam na si Mark. And yung owner din nung inuupahan na bahay ni Adam at ni Elisa. And sabi doon sa note, quote, Mr. Mark, you like being in control. Now, who is in control? We have your daughter. And sinabi din doon sa note na the person or yung mga tao na kumidnap ko no doon sa daughter ni Mark was asking for one million dollar ransom and a signed off with the words no cops. Walang polis. Of course, kinontak ng mga polis si Mark and tinanong kung nawawala ba yung kanyang daughter pero sabi ni Mark, no, she's here. So, so at this point, dahil nga nagkaroon ng komosyon doon sa bahay ng mga bakers, you'd think na iti-check man lang ni Elisa at ni Adam si Zara. Kasi nga, nakalagay doon sa note na a girl had been kidnapped na si Zara, yung anak ni, ni Mark. And you'd think na sasabihin ng mga polis, kay Elisa at kay Adam na why don't you check your daughter? Baka mama yung daughter nyo yung napagkamalan. But no. Why? Because nga hindi alam ng mga neighbors ni Elisa at ni Adam na meron silang 10-year-old na anak. Of course, hindi rin alam ng mga polis na may bata palang nakatira doon sa bahay na yon. That same day, October 10, 2010, after nung backyard fire, Adam finally decided na he should probably check on his daughter. So, pinuntahan niya yung kwarto ni Zara. She's not there. Chinek niya yung bahay. She's not there. She's nowhere he can think of. At this point, Zara Baker is nowhere to be seen. So at around 2 p.m., Adam called the police to report his daughter missing. Yung start ng call ni Adam, very casual, very... Yung tono niya was parang chill. Ang sabi niya, quote, Yeah, my daughter is missing. He also added na, My daughter is, I think, coming into puberty because she's hitting that brooding stage. So we only see her when she comes out and when she wants 
something. And that's about it. And Adam actually laughed. Parang after yun sabihin yun, hehe. Parang ganun. And parang ang weird na nare-report mo na nawawala ang anak mo. Pero parang natatawa ka pa. Nakakaloka. Okay. Moving on. I'm not saying that there's a right way and a wrong way to act when your child goes missing dahil wala pa naman akong anak. But definitely, hindi magiging ganito yung reaction ko or hindi ako matatawa or something like that kung ire-report kong nawawala. Especially kung anak ko ang nawawala. On a side note, yung biological mother ni Zara na si Emily was able to track her daughter. As I've said at the start of the video na huling nakita ni Emily yung anak niya, 8 months pa lang si Zara and wala siyang kaalam-alam na si Zara pala ay nasa US na. So by this time, na-track ni Emily na nasa US pala si Zara after spending years trying to find Zara. And she figured out na si Zara ay nasa US when a friend who had connections with North Carolina sent Emily a photo of Zara at school holding a school certificate. When Emily examined the certificate, hinanap niya yung school na nakalagay doon sa certificate na yun and she realized na her daughter was now living in the US. At that point, ni hindi niya alam na umalis na pala na umalis pala ng Australia si Adam kasama si Emily because nga, cannot ni Adam si Emily out of Zara's life just because Emily had been struggling with postpartum depression which is common naman sa mga babae na nanganganak or pagkatapos manganak and remember na Emily was only 19 when she gave birth to Zara and I don't know if Adam did even try to help Emily throughout doon sa pinagdadaanan niya, yung depression niya after niyang ipanganak si Zara. Or may iba pang rason si Adam kung bakit he cut off or inalis niya si Emily out of Zara's life. So, a statewide Amber Alert was sent out that evening, October 10, for Zara Baker. And, syempre, interview din ng mga pulis si Elisa at si Adam para makapag-provide sila ng details and ng information at para ma-eliminate din silang mag-asawa as suspects. Of course, standard procedure ito na kung may mga ganitong pangyayari, ang first suspect ay mga immediate family. Either yung nanay, yung tatay, mga kapatid, lolo, lola, titos, and titas para lang ma-eliminate etong family, kumbaga. Ang sabi ni Adam sa mga pulis, ang iniisip daw niya na pinagsususpechahan niya ay yung tao na nag-iwan ng ransom note doon sa kanyang work vehicle na siguro um, this person mistaken Zara for his boss's daughter. Baka akala nung kidnapper na si Zara was Mark's daughter. And maybe yung fire doon sa backyard ng bahay nila Adam was sort of a distraction para makuha nila si Zara without anybody noticing. Ang sabi naman ni Elisa sa mga pulis na yung last time na chinect niya yung kanyang stepdaughter was at 2.20 a.m. And ang sabi ni Elisa, tulog daw si Zara nung tiningnan niya and wala siyang idea kung ano nangyari. And kiniklaim pa ni Elisa na yung reason daw kung bakit hindi niya chinect si Zara pagkatapos ng fire was because Zara had a hearing disability, kumbaga. And yung nangyayaring commotion would not be able to make her react or anything because may problema na nga yung penga ni Zara. So, she didn't want to disturb Zara's sleep. So, yung unang lugar, of course, kung saan naghanap ng mga clue yung investigators 
was the baker's home. And wala silang nakita na signs of forced entry and wala ding sign na umalis or lumayas ng kusa si Zara doon sa bahay. Dahil wala namang history si Zara ng paglalayas. And kung tutuusin, ang daming reason ni Zara para umalis, para lumayas. Because she was being abused by her stepmom. And at this point, the investigators discovered that Zara's prosthetic leg was missing. But her hearing aids had been left behind. So kung naglaya si Zara, bakit hindi niya dala yung hearing aid niya? Ang hirap naman niyatang umalis nang wala ka naririnig, di ba? And why would a kidnapper take Zara's prosthetic leg? After all, kung wala yung leg na yon ni Zara, mas madali siyang itakas, kumbaga, nung supposedly kidnapper ni Zara. And kung naglayas man si Zara, dapat naisip niya na dalhin yung hearing aids niya para marinig niya kung ano yung mga nangyayari kung saan siya pupunta. Kasi kung tatawid man siya, of course, kailangan marinig niya na may sasakyan, kumbaga. So, no October 10 nga, Elisa was arrested. Pero, she was not arrested in relation to Zara's disappearance. She was charged with writing fake checks, larceny, communicating threats, and driving without a license. Habang nasa kulungan si Elisa, ongoing yung search for Zara. The police even had a rescue dogs with them para matrace yung amoy ni Zara and yung mga dogs react. Yung dalawang dogs yung dala ng mga pulis ay nag-react doon sa vehicle ni Adam. Yung Chevy na SUV and yung shared vehicle na mag-asawa na Toyota Camry. The dogs alerted to the presence of human remains. So, immediately, yung dalawang sasakyan were impounded by the police and they continued their search in the neighborhood and nearby buildings. And nag-hand out din sila ng mga photos ni Zara sa neighbors. And this is when the police were shocked to learn that most of the neighbors didn't even know that a 10-year-old girl was living with Elisa and Adam. On October 11, Adam appears on Good Morning America pleading with the public for any information on his missing daughter. The next day, on October 12, the Amber Alert for Zara Baker is cancelled after Elisa Zara's stepmother admits to police that she is the one that wrote the ransom note and she also asks for an attorney, making her the prime suspect for writing the fake note. And Elisa is charged with obstruction of justice, adding to her other charges. Zara's missing person investigation is changed to a homicide investigation, meaning the search for Zara is now a search for her remains. One major problem that the investigators were having was pinpointing exactly when Zara had last been seen by someone other than Elisa and Adam. Because nga hindi naman pumapasok sa school si Zara. And clearly, Zara never left the house. She was rarely seen by anyone. And this made it very difficult to start the search in the right places. So basically, hindi alam ng mga polis kung saan sila maghahanap, kung saan sila pupunta because wala din silang time frame to put Zara in the house. Adam eventually admitted that he had not seen his daughter in about 15 days. Nakakalungkot. Biruin nyo yun. Magkasama sila sa bahay supposedly. 
Paanong nangyari na 15 days nang hindi nakikita ni Adam yung anak niya? Cancer survivor. Amputee by hearing disability. Hindi man lang niya na-check for 15 days yung anak niya. Ano ba naman yung silipin niya sa kwarto? Hindi naman siguro palasyo yung kanilang bahay para hindi niya makita yung anak niya, di ba? Kahit na nagtatrabaho siya. Ang sabi kasi ni Adam, he worked a lot. And his days were so long, so by the time na makauwi siya, Zara was already sleeping. And he said na he would always pop his head doon sa room ni Zara and he will say goodnight even if Zara was already sleeping. As far as Adam can see, according to him, Zara was tucked in bed. And ang sabi pa niya, it wasn't unusual for him to not see his daughter for long periods of time. And si Elisa daw had always been the primary carer, yung nag-aalaga, kay Zara. Since lagi niyang nasa trabaho, etong si Adam. And si Adam kasi nagtatrabaho siya sa isang furniture store. And ang sabi niya, na si Zara daw at si Elisa ay nagpunta doon sa kanyang pinagtatrabahuhan on September 22. Meaning, at least, nung araw na yon September 22, na Zara was alive until doon sa point na yon So, noong October 25, 2010, Adam is arrested. And like Elisa, The charges have nothing to do with Zara. Yung charges ni Adam included five counts of writing worthless checks, three counts of failing to appear in court, two counts of communicating a threat, and failure to return a rental property. All crimes he had committed since being with Elisa. So, he ended up joining Elisa in jail. But, he was soon out on bail as his bond was much, much lower than Elisa. Two days after Adam's arrest, a prosthetic leg was found in a bushland sa Coldwell County. So, yung mga investigador, sigurado sila na yung prosthetic leg na yon ay kay Zara Baker. But to be sure, kinumpare nila yung serial number ng prosthetic leg with Zara's medical records back in Australia. And it was found to be a match doon sa prosthetic leg ni Zara. And at this point, Elisa Baker was given an option if she cooperated with the investigation. And sinabi ng mga imbisagodor na Elisa needs to tell them where Zara was. And kung sasabihin ni Elisa yon, the death penalty would be taken off the table. If Elisa will not cooperate and was found guilty, she would likely be sentenced to death. So Elisa agreed to cooperate and began to tell her version of events. So this is part one of Zara Baker's case. Medyo mahaba dahil sobrang daming information. In part 2, let's talk about Elisa's version of events. Part 2 will be uploaded on Monday. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope to see you in part 2. Please stay home, stay safe. God bless you all.